a nurse, you want to be familiar with heart blocks. And in this review, I'm going to be talking about third degree heart blocks, also known as a complete heart block. This type of heart block is the worst of all blocks. And the reason it's occurring is because electrical signal from the atria isn't making it to the ventricles. Because normally, remember, whenever the atria contract, it creates the P wave. And then right after that, we have ventricular contraction, which creates the QRS complex. So on an EKG strip, you should have P wave, QRS complex, P wave, QRS complex. And that shows you that signals traveling from the atria to the ventricles causing contraction. And it's working so well together. But here in this rhythm, you're gonna have P waves and QRS complexes that aren't collaborating, hence working together. They're really independent of each other. So over here, there'll be some P waves that are doing their own thing. And then QRS complexes who are doing their own thing. Therefore, whenever we're looking at the characteristics and criteria to determine if this is a third degree heart block, you're gonna see the following. Regular P waves making that atrial rhythm regular and its rate normal. And the QRS complexes will be regular making the ventricular rhythm regular, but there will be less of those QRS complexes than P waves. So the ventricular rate will be slower than the atrial rate. Now it's important to know that the ventricular rate can be 40 or less depending on what structure is firing for the ventricles causing it to contract. And when you measure those QRS complexes, the width can vary depending on what structure is firing. So they can be narrow or wide, so greater or less than 0.12 seconds. In addition, you can have variable PR intervals because again, the P wave and the QRS complexes are independent. Now what could cause this type of heart block? Well, the person could be born with it, so it could be congenital, or the person has severe heart disease, or they have a myocardial infarction, or they're taking some type of medication that they became toxic on, like digoxin, or they have structural damage to their heart that's affecting the electrical conduction system, or there is a heart valve problem. Now, what is the treatment for a third degree heart block? Well, with this, your patient's usually gonna have some signs and symptoms because whenever the heart is beating like this, those ventricles and atria, they're really being independent of each other, it's not gonna perfuse your body. So you're gonna have a low cardiac output, which you can present with a low blood pressure, weak pulse, mental status changes. That patient just doesn't look good. They're pale, they're cold, they're clammy. All of that's telling you, hey, that heart is not pumping enough blood throughout the body to keep it alive. And this could progress to death. So what you wanna do is you wanna activate that emergency response system. And this will get a team in the room to help you. Now, some treatment that can be given to that patient is that atropine could be administered to help that heart pump more efficiently, or the patient could be connected to a temporary pacemaker, which will again, get that heart beating correctly so we can maintain cardiac output. And then eventually the patient will need a permanent pacemaker implanted. Okay, so that wraps up this review over third degree heart block. And if you'd like to watch more videos about heart block, in this series, you can access the link in the YouTube description below.